the first test flight for this whole new era of private space flight and commercial space flight. Somebody who's going to be watching this very closely, Colonel Jeremy Hansen, who is Canadian astronaut, indeed the next Canadian to go into space. He's all very closely tied to what's happening today. And there he is this morning in Houston, Texas, home of the Johnson Space Center. Good morning, Jeremy. Nice to see you again. Uh, great to speak with you, Heather. Thank you for giving us some time on what could be a very important day for space flight. Um, normally, we'd see people like you all gathered together, I guess, at the Space Center there. Not so in this era of COVID-19. So tell me about how you'll be watching and where and what's going to happen for you this afternoon. Yeah, I'll be uh, watching from my home here in Houston with my family and uh, super excited about today. What an amazing uh, step forward. This commercial crew program is, uh, has been designed and set up by NASA to encourage the future of spaceflight, reducing costs, re increasing competition, and we're going to see more and more people flying in space in the future because of what we're doing today. It is incredible to think that we could be seeing today, if all goes well, and I know the weather's a little bit iffy for today, but today or Saturday or Sunday, if all goes well, this is, this is the future opening up. What exactly do you see as the significance of this? Well, I think it's tremendously significant it's because of what I was saying about reducing the cost. We're going to have we're going to be doing more of this. We're going to have not just professional government astronauts flying in space in the future. We're going to have more space tourism. Um, we're going to be leveraging industry to change the way we leverage space. And of course, these are just footsteps on our way back to the moon. We're working on the Gateway program. We have multiple spacecraft we're building. This is just one of them. We have Boeing's uh, spacecraft that we'll be launching with humans on it in the not too distant future. We have the heavy lift rocket we're building with the Orion capsule. These are pretty exciting times. They really are. And there you are right in the midst of it as you train and work away there in Houston. So the two astronauts, Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley, who are going up today, uh, you'll be working alongside them. You will know. You will have watched their training for this moment. Can you give us some insider perspective on what's been going on? Yeah, early on uh, in my time here in Houston, uh, Bob Bankin was the chief of the astronaut office, and then we were working on these commercial crew rockets. The two of them have been at the heart of that, or the heart of that since since it started up. Um, and we just got a note from the chief of the astronaut office uh, late last night. They're in just great shape, all fired up, ready to go, and support this next step. They'll be on the uh, International Space Station hopefully by tomorrow, if all goes as goes as planned today. If all goes as planned, and of course everyone is hoping for that. Here's one aspect of the future we didn't yet talk about, and that is your future. Personally, you mentioned the Boeing rocket, and of course we have the SpaceX uh, uh, vessel going up now. Um, either of those could be your ride into space in the future. Tell us about your connection. Yeah, absolutely. So this affects you know our entire astronaut corps, but... Uh you know, as, as a Canadian is going to fly in space in the not too distant future, I could be on this exact rocket. I could be on that Boeing rocket. It could be on that SLS rocket. I don't really know. But what I do know is my flight, for example, is tied to the success of flights like this. And uh, what's most important, probably for our young Canadians to understand, is you know, we are just paving the way for a future that is we expect to change drastically for the ways we're going to leverage space, but how much we're going to be doing in space. And of course, setting up for future f footsteps uh, on the moon again. Some, some promising stuff. So for you then, as we watch this, we, I mean, we've seen the SpaceX rocket take off with unmanned flights, but now this, this, this test flight with the two astronauts inside. And I was watching an interview earlier, Jeremy, people talking about the capsule and how they're going to be working uh, with it, how obviously advanced it is from a technological standpoint. Someone was calling it one big eye iPhone or I guess maybe a big iPad because of all the all the digitization all the technology there what what should we know about what it looks like what it's like to work with as we watch it take off today well I think it's you know it's not unlike uh, aircraft of, of today um, you know technology has evolved that allows us to just simplify things and reduce the weight of spacecraft this is a big deal I think what's really fascinating about today's launch is you have, people have to remember this first stage of the rocket. It's a huge rocket. I think it's nine stories high. That first part, after it does its job of taking them pretty close to Earth orbit, is going to turn around and come back and land on a barge in the ocean. I think that is pretty phenomenal itself. Something else that is interesting that we did not have on the space shuttle, we have a significant increase in the level of safety 
um, by the fact that we have an abort system on this rocket. So if anything goes wrong at launch, leading up to launch, or during the flight profile to space, we can eject that capsule off the top of this rocket. And, uh, and hopefully that would save the lives of any astronauts if that were to happen. And so this is a pretty important thing that we have as astronauts in the safety, safety category. So safety, obviously a big issue on this test flight. And as you, you've mentioned a couple of times in our conversation, this will go a long way to reducing the costs. And part of that is because it would be a reusable rocket when it comes back down and lands on the barge and then they can send it up into space again. Uh, no wonder you're so excited about all of this. Colonel Jeremy yep. Hansen, it's great to have you on the program again. Enjoy, uh, enjoy your spectator seat in all of this and it gets closer to your own mission. Thank you. I'll be watching uh, with much anticipation today. It's a great day for uh, human spaceflight indeed. Great to talk to you, Colonel Jeremy Hansen from Houston. He's done it all and he's with us this morning as he is so often. Chris Hadfield, great to have you on the program again. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Heather. Yeah, I launched from that launch pad twice, in fact. I went to space from there, so uh, it's uh, it's really nice to see the rocket sitting out there and getting ready to go this afternoon. Well, I'm wondering what you're thinking about that, because it was 2011. I was just mentioning on air, I, I went down to Florida to see a, a shuttle launch for myself. So I was there on the last launch, and, he, and at that time, I mean, you might not have imagined that there would be a launch in the near future on that space when they brought the shuttle program to an end. So as you see the rocket there ready to go, tell us how you see this mission and this moment. It's really big for a couple reasons, Heather. Um, one is, as you say, it's been quite a while, but, but it takes 10 years to build a human spaceship. That's been traditionally true for Apollo, for the shuttle, and now for uh, for the SpaceX Dragon. So it just it's really hard to make a ship safe enough so that we're going to trust people on board. So, you know, it's been almost exactly 10 years since they announced that they were going to start building this. So it's big on that side. The second is, uh, of course, this provides another way to get to the International Space Station. We, we've been sort of ransomed to one vehicle for a decade, just the Soyuz, and, and that's okay, but if they have a technical problem, then, then we're stuck. So it's really good to have another way to get there. But the third, and maybe the most important, is that this vehicle that, that SpaceX and NASA put together is far, far less expensive than any other human ride to space we've ever had. That opens a whole new market, a whole new capability that, that we've never seen before, and no one can even predict what that's going to open up. So, so there's a lot riding on today's launch. Can you explain, so everyone understands, why it's so much less expensive with this type of rocket, Chris? Uh, well, you want to make a rocket as simple as possible, but but no simpler. <laughs> I think that was Einstein. And um, <laughs> but uh, in this case, they have optimized everything they can for simplicity, for ease of manufacture, but also for reusability. And the main rocket that's going to be underneath uh, Bob and Doug today when they launch, that whole rocket, a after it pushes them and gets them above the atmosphere and going pretty fast. Then, of course, it's going to come down and land. It'll be too far away from shore to land on the ground, but it'll land on a barge out uh, 500 miles offshore. So that whole piece gets reused. We reuse sometimes, if they can catch them, the shrouds that come off the front because they're worth a couple million or three million. So if you can start to reuse major components, all of them of your ship, and they're going to even reuse the capsule that Bob and Doug are flying in today, uh, maybe for an unmanned mission in the future, then it's it's just like anything else. If you can recycle it and reuse it, then it's better for everything. And in this case, it's way cheaper. So so that's uh, the reason it gets so much less expensive. And that's the big step in technology. When you say Bob and Doug, Bob Benkin, Doug Hurley, the two astronauts who are the test pilots on this mission, you say them like you know them well, and of course you do. So tell us a little bit about uh, the astronauts who are going to take this step. Uh, yeah, Doug Hurley, uh, what's interesting, they're both married to astronauts, bo both of them. They all married classmates from the mm -hmm. class of 2000. So, so Bob is married to Megan MacArthur and Doug is married to uh, Karen Nyberg. Uh, it's between them all, I guess they've flown, I don't know, seven times in space. But uh, Bob was my next door neighbor for, for many years down in Houston. Bob, he's an amazing guy. He's a flight test engineer. Um, he has a PhD from Caltech. 
you know, which is something else. He was chief of the astronaut for several years. Brilliant guy. He's done, I think, six spacewalks. Uh, really solid, dependable, capable guy. Doug Hurley, uh, classic uh, short haircut uh, test pilot, you know, from the Marine Corps, really good guy, uh, flown in space. And uh, as you know, when you were down for that last launch of the shuttle back in 2011, Doug was on that flight. So uh, he was the last American to launch from from U.S. soil, and, and now he's he's the uh, sort of the captain of this ship as well. So they're, they're really super competent, capable people. They're taking a huge risk today, flying yeah. a spaceship for the first time, and that's why we have two graduates of test pilot school on board. Well, I was going to ask you just that very point because we know that that's part of your CV as well, Navy Test Pilot of the Year at a certain point in your career. So you know what this means. I know we've had this conversation before when I ask about safety, and you always say, you know, we train for that. It's a managed risk. But this is something that's never been done before with this particular spacecraft, uh, you know, two people on board. So how does that change the calculus and just in terms of, uh, of, of the risk that this presents for the two men? When people get on an airplane to go flying, uh, it's pretty safe. Uh, and so therefore, you're not like sitting on an ejection seat, you know. But most uh, complicated and dangerous airplanes, you sit on an ejection seat. So if the airplane has a problem, you can pull the handles and jump out, just unfortunately like the, the snowbirds had to do just a couple weeks ago. Um, even that's not guaranteed, as we saw so tragically with Jen's loss of life. For these two guys here, an ejection seat wouldn't work, but in fact, their whole capsule can eject. So as has happened with rockets in the past, if the rocket fails or starts to blow up, then they can uh, operate the emergency system or it can happen automatically and pluck their whole capsule off the top. And then it will fire its own rockets to get clear of the, of the failing rocket underneath. And then it has built-in parachutes. And because of where they're headed up the Atlantic coast, they'll end up in the water somewhere if that happens. And then naturally, we've got all of the search and rescue plans for how to go retrieve them if, if that unlikely event occurs. But that's just one of 10,000 things that Bob and Doug have trained for. And they're ready for it if it happens. The system's there to protect them. Um, but it's still an immensely dangerous thing to do. And, and that's what test pilots do for a living. So the extra special nature of this. When you went out to, to that launch pad, did you go out in the Astro van, that tin can? Did you travel yeah, out in that? Uh, on both of my uh, space shuttle flights and, and on the Russian Soyuz flight, there's a, a designated sort of bus, and, and the Americans call it the Astro van. Um, and, and yes, I rode out on the Astro van, which it's kind of a, a lovely, thoughtful ride. The, the nicest moment, Heather, is when you're, you're coming down sort of the causeway there that, that all leads to the, the vehicle assembly building, but then you turn right by the vehicle assembly building and you start heading out towards the launch pad and everybody on the Astro van cranes their head forward to try and catch the first glimpse of their rocket ship sitting on the pad. It turns sort of a lifetime of anticipation and imagination into a morning's reality. That's our ship out there. And today we're, we're gonna get ready to go. And so so that, that's a really special moment for everyone. I'm sure Bob and Doug, they'll be turning the helmets of their spacesuits to have a look at their ship. To see that. I wanted to ask about that and what a beautiful recollection that is because no more Astrovan, they're riding out in a Tesla given the connection to Elon Musk. So that too, Chris, may be an indication, the whole new future of, of space flight as it begins to unfold today. It's just always such a pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you for your insight and for uh, sharing all of that with us, Chris. Thanks, Heather. Go for launch.